the Cleo Parker Robinson Dance Ensemble, next on Black Nouveau. Hi, I'm Faith Colas. Welcome to Black Nouveau. Along with the Cleo Parker Robinson Dance Ensemble, we'll also talk with Reggie Bika, Secretary of Wisconsin's Department of Children and Family Services, and examine the harm that comes from secondhand smoke. But first, domestic violence affects us all, but has disproportionately higher consequences for the African American community. One of those consequences is a loss of employment. Liddy Collins introduces us to an agency addressing that need, the Sisters. I was had some difficult times in my life, um, and I needed help. Unemployed, in a domestic violence situation, um, bitter, a lot of anger. I was going through a domestic issue with, um, with a boyfriend that I had. Um, it wasn't really physical, it was a lot of verbal. I was in a domestic violence situation. These women came together as Sisters Gourmet Coffee Shop and Deli, which is a nonprofit training site. This site is run by ASHA Family Services, a comprehensive family violence intervention and prevention agency. This training site is for women in ASHA's domestic violence transitional housing program. Sisters is about building jobs, lives, and about building community and family. Sisters is going to provide jobs, provide job training, particularly on excellence in customer service, which is a major piece that employers are talking about. They have partnered with Milwaukee Area Technical College's School of Corporate Learning and their Excellence in Customer Service program. In that partnership is we have women are able to access the training on excellence in customer service, which is a job skill they can take anywhere. And they additionally are able to access other schooling and programming um, that is available to them at MATC. The location for Sisters came about with the help of business owner Moses Drew of Drew Enterprises, a la the Ritz Fish Market. I saw a need to try to direct some of these folks coming out of uh, prison, coming out of jail, get them reestablished back in the community, create some jobs. Uh, my, my position is, you know, once people pay their debt to society, they should be given the opportunity to start all over. So having these businesses here, in conjunction with the Center Street Business District, um, we need an entity like Sisters here. We're trying to create new jobs, new businesses. So it's not only going to create these jobs, um, but it's going to um, build self-sufficiency for um, these women. Many of them lack job training, work histories, um, stronger work ethics. This lack comes from an inability to keep a job because of their abusive situation. Because many employers are not understandable or many employers um, um, don't want to even deal with that um, issue. I think for most employers, they have them. They have them. And there's a large, some of the, the signs are large um, absenteeism. Um, lateness to work, um, uh, frequent um, lack of productivity uh, on the job. We've seen in many instances where women are harassed over the phone, where their abuser may call them repeatedly and she's arguing or whatever or is upset and has to walk away from her desk or walk away from her job site. It's very similar to women that are trying to increase their education. Well, the night before a test, you know, there may be a violent, there often is a violent episode or argument or something like that. So those are some of the things that have hindered them. So they'll jump from job to job because employers will terminate them. And so we go through the steps to process and uh, help them build in those areas. And then that way we're able to comfortably place them in jobs where employers have agreed to hire them at higher wages once they've completed the training. 
Antonio Van hopes through sisters, women can start to build their skill base, which can then make them more valuable to an employer. Sisters is providing encouragement. Um, they're helpful. Um, I don't look at it as just a paycheck. I look at it as an experience. Um, they just there when you need them. It gives me a sense of pride. Um, it's giving me my strength back. Um, it's giving me my willpower to get out and achieve more and do more for my family. It's just really staying focused on what I have to do in life. Um, get a lot of information about uh, domestic violence. Um, know what triggers, you know, when I meet a certain individual. I'm learning how to be more independent and gain self-esteem and learn more responsibility. Sisters is one of those entities. Uh, it's associated with ASHA, which is a domestic violence association. Um, their outreach program is, is a very, very good one, and it encompasses the heart of this community. Uh, people need an opportunity, and Sisters is one of those Indians doing a wonderful job to help direct people back into the mainstream of society. Sisters is located at 3717 West Center Street in Milwaukee. The Smoke Free Milwaukee Project is a citywide effort to protect Milwaukeeans from the harmful effects of secondhand smoke. Joining me is Dalvery Blackwell from the project. Welcome, Dalvery. Thank you for having me. How big a problem is secondhand smoke? Well, we've known for quite some time the impact of secondhand smoke. Nationally, studies show that secondhand smoke can cause asthma attacks, heart disease, as well as lung cancer. In Wisconsin, we know that 800 uh, residents are, can die from um, smoking uh, secondhand smoke, um, tobacco-related diseases. What does the project want to do about reducing secondhand smoke? The most important thing that we can do right now is to support Governor Dole's uh, legislation that, which is in the budget, let, uh, smoke free law legislation that would prohibit smoking in all public places, including restaurants and bars. So, do we need to make phone calls to our legislators Absolutely. or write letters? Absolutely. I think re residents should make uh, phone calls to their state and local um, elected officials asking them to support the governor's budget and the, the legislation that's in, in the budget. Is there a timetable for the for people to respond to their legislators? Right. We know that March 21st is the first Joint Finance Committee hearing here in Milwaukee, and we are encouraging people to get on the phones now to call their elected officials, asking them to support the statewide legislation and uh, specifically members of the Joint Finance Committee. Okay, and I'm sure you get this kind of question a lot. But how do you respond to critics? who claim the effort will harm businesses and violate smokers' rights. There's no evidence or research that shows that businesses lose revenue as a result of um, eliminating or prohibiting their customers from smoking. Mm -hmm. For example, Madison has enacted a smoke-free law. There's no smoking in restaurants and bars. And as a result, um, when that law beca became effective, the licenses actually increases, increased in Madison. What kind of support do you provide smokers uh, who want to quit smoking? What's available right now is the Wisconsin Quit Line. We also uh, make referrals to other resources that are available in the, in the community. Do people share with you how difficult it is for them to quit smoking? Oh, absolutely. We know that the relapse for um, smoking is very high. There's many attempts and we know that Native Americans have, as well as African Americans have the most difficult time quitting. The disparities within those groups are very high. How long has this effort been, you've been working on this effort? I personally have been working for over a decade. The Black Health Coalition um, has been working in this effort as well for over a decade. So we've been at it a quite a long time. What other things are coming down the pike in terms of activities that people can get involved in to help your effort? 
Well, people can write letters to their editor. They can also meet with their elected officials. They can join coalitions and get involved in that way as well. Have you met with any business, any people in the business community about the effort that say that they support your effort? I know that the um, Wisconsin Tobacco Program has a, um, a program that is targeting businesses that voluntarily has gone uh, smoke-free. The Wisconsin Smoke Free Milwaukee, Smoke Free, the Wisconsin Smoke Free Project has a uh, project. Okay. And what number can people call if they want to get more information about the project? 414-933-0064. Thank you, Davery, for joining us. Thank you. The late Catherine Dunham was one of the most influential pioneers of black dance. She had a major impact on Cleo Parker Robinson's life and the style of her dance ensemble. Liddy Collins has more. This is the Cleo Parker Robinson Dance Ensemble out of Denver, Colorado. For over 38 years, this international modern dance company has been committed to bringing people together through the excellence in art. The founder, Cleo Parker Robinson, started this company because of her love of art and dance, which she started very early in life. How many of you have ever taken a dance class? Let me see. I think growing up in Denver, uh, my father was the first black actor in Denver. I grew up in the theater, and my mother, um, Anglo, um, she was a classical musician. And so here I had this extraordinary diversity in my life in Denver, Colorado, in Five Points. I was exposed to like Harlem right there. It was the Harlem of the West. The Robinson Dance Company performs at many genres, jazz, hip hop, African, flamingo, swing, and even belly dance. ensemble tour this time around featured legendary Katherine Dunham choreography. Ms. Robinson says she chose the works of Ms. Dunham because of its range of expression. She says she also chose it because it's totally entertaining for the discipline of the technique and the socialization which brought people together. <laughs> I think Catherine Dunham's been in my life for a long time. I've been influenced and inspired by Catherine Dunham since I was a little girl. I think most of us grew up seeing her, seeing the influence that she had, and we didn't know it. We weren't aware of it. Any black dancers, any uh, Broadway show or any film, she had something to do with it because she was an innovator. She broke those color lines. And um, she also bridged the gap in terms of bringing African music here because the drums were, uh, during slavery, they were abolished. We did not have drums. So for her to bring back that element of drums and rhythm to reconnect ourselves with ourselves and with others. <laughs> Thank you. 
life obstacles, personal and social, helped shape Cleo Parker Robinson and this dance company. Growing up as an African American woman, but biracially, is is a it's a it's kind of a challenge trying to discover who you are and who people think you are, defining who you are. So as I say, I'm a black woman. Some people will say, but you don't look black. So then you have to go and redefine yourself all the time about what culture means. Uh, that, that, that race really is culture. It's not color. Race is culture. And we all have color, but we all have culture. And color shouldn't define us. Culture defines us. In 2007, Governor Doyle merged a number of child support services into a single agency, the Wisconsin Department of Children and Family Services. Our guest is the inaugural head of that department, Secretary Reggie Beeker. Welcome to Black Nouveau, Secretary. Thank you very much, Everett. It's great to be here. You bring a lot of experience in social work and child care to this position. Talk about the challenges and the opportunities that you've, that you've had so far in, in merging these various services. Thank you. The Department of Children and Families started July 1st of last year. Governor Doyle proposed the budget and what we've done essentially is taken 30 plus programs that were housed in two different state agencies, child welfare services, foster care, kinship, adoption, domestic abuse programs and other services uh, from the Department of Health and Family Services and we're integrating them from programs that were formerly housed in the Department of Workforce Development, the State Child Support Program, um, uh, child care uh, subsidy program and uh, the W-2 program into the Department of Children and Families. It really has provided a number of uh, unique opportunities. The governor was, has challenged us to refocus, retool, and reprioritize our efforts. He wanted to make sure that we weren't creating another state agency just to create another set uh, of complex bureaucracy for families. Uh, and we've been very excited about this new opportunity. Okay, well Milwaukee has had a large share of problems with child services in the state. In a couple of instances has moved to take over responsibility for those programs. Why was it necessary to do that? Uh, well, th recently Secretary Timberlake in the Department of Health Services announced that uh, the state would be assuming responsibility for income maintenance programs including the Wisconsin Shares Program in uh, Milwaukee County. Uh, Secretary Timberlake, Governor Doyle and I have been concerned about um, the access to necessary services for families in this community uh, and the lack of responsiveness by the county who's been uh, implementing these services for many years. There have been many efforts uh, over the p past several years uh, to uh, encourage Milwaukee County and to assist them to improve uh, services for families but to no avail and we felt that the only appropriate option was for the state to assume responsibility of these very critical life supports for families. What is the state going to do that's different that's going to produce a different result? Uh, well we'll be um, hiring uh, new staff who will oversee and putting in new t uh, approaches to making sure that families uh, get access to services when they need them. We think that we can t uh, better utilize technology, we can better staff uh, support services and make it easier and more responsive for families to get the assistance that they need. Assistance such as food share, medical assistance or child care subsidies. Okay. Um, what are your three major priorities with the job? Yeah. Uh, three major priorities, refocus, retool, and reprioritize. We need to make sure that children all across our state are safe and uh, grow up in nurturing environments. Governor Doyle and I think that the best way that we can do that is to enhance our efforts around prevention and uh, early intervention. We also want to make sure that more children in our state have access to high quality early care and education. I have to tell you as a prevention strategy, we have decades worth of research that tell us that children who attend high quality uh, child care centers do better in life. Those children are more likely to graduate from high school, less likely to use drugs and alcohol, less likely to be involved in our criminal justice system. They're more likely to be good, uh, hardworking taxpayers someday. We want more children, especially children from low-income families, to have those experiences. We also want to make sure that uh, more parents are able to secure and maintain meaningful jobs. Mm -hmm. 
and we want to make sure that more fathers are engaged in meaningful ways in the lives of their children. Okay, how are you going to make all of this happen? Um, you know, what you're talking about, most people say costs a lot of money, and I know right now that's the one thing the state doesn't have. That's exactly right. Uh, we have a $5.8 billion deficit that the governor has been working very hard and has put together a very uh, uh, aggressive uh, budget to get spending in line and to make sure that we're making the right investments, uh, invest in, uh, certainly investments in our children, in our families. Some things that we're doing, uh, we have sweeping changes to the Bureau of Milwaukee Child Welfare. We're adding new staff to the Bureau of Milwaukee Child Welfare to make sure that we're uh, being able to uh, identify children who are at risk of abuse or neglect and get them uh, necessary services to make sure that they're safe. We're adding nurses to, uh, the governor has proposed, I should say, adding nurses to the Bureau of Milwaukee Child Welfare so that children who are three or younger are most vulnerable children as well as children who are medically fragile have that extra health care support to make sure that they're growing and developing appropriately. Uh, in child care, uh, the governor has proposed, proposed a quality rating system so that we can um, rate qual uh, child care centers across the state and inform parents who want to make sure that their kids have the opportunity uh, to not only be in safe child care environments, but to uh, learn in, in child care environments, that they have the information necessary to make the best choices for their children. Okay. You know, fraud and child abuse are not easy subjects to talk about. Are you comfortable that your agency is doing all it can to reduce these problems? Absolutely. We've been very concerned about the misuse, inaccuracy of information, and uh, quite frankly, fraudulent activity that has been exposed in the Wisconsin Shares Program. Uh, Governor Doyle has been working uh, throughout his time in office to uh, improve our efforts to get better and more accurate information and to reduce fraud. Uh, most recently, he's proposed a swipe card uh, that we'll be implementing in the state of Wisconsin that uh, parents who are receiving shares who are going to licensed facilities, they'll be able to swipe their children uh, into care and swipe their children out so we'll have more accurate information about attendance. Right now, everything is still done by paper. The governor's proposed creating a program integrity unit so that we'll have folks at the state level who can look for potential fraudulent behavior, investigate those that, that potential fraudulent activity, and hold those providers accountable. Governor is also going to be recommending several statutory changes so that we can uh, be more aggressive at going after uh, overpayments for providers and holding providers and parents who misuse the system accountable. Wow. You know, we've got a little less than a minute. How did you get involved in, in, this, in this field? What was uh, it that attracted you to it? Thank you. I, I'm a social worker by training. I, I was a child welfare worker myself many years ago and a supervisor. Uh, um, uh, and an administrator before joining uh, the Doyle administration. Uh, my wife and I uh, both love children. My wife is an elementary school principal. She and I were foster parents. Uh, I served on the school board. Uh, I guess I, I would just have to say that taking care of kids, it really is an investment in our future. And uh, I want to do all I can, uh, both personally and professionally, to make sure that kids all across our state have the right start in life. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Secretary Beaker. My privilege, thank you. And finally tonight, a few words of wisdom from one of our favorite sisters, Maya Angelou. When it looked like the sun wasn't shining anymore, God put a rainbow in the clouds. Her brown body has no glory. If she could dance naked under palm trees and see her image in the river, she would know. But there are no palm trees on the streets, and dishwater gives back no images. Mm -hmm. When it looked like the sun was not shining anymore. Once riding in old Baltimore, my head was filled, my heart was filled with glee. I saw a Baltimorean keep looking straight at me. Now I was eight and very small, and she was no bit bigger, and so I smiled. But she stuck out her tongue and called me naked. She said, you little black, no good naked. 
Is it dirty, rotten, Nick? Mm -hmm. I saw the whole of Baltimore from May until December. And of all the things that happened there, that's all that I remember. Mm -hmm. Still. When it looked like the sun was not shining anymore, Miss Rosie, when I see you, you black. Brown, beige, red, yellow, pink, white, sad of a woman. When I see you, Miss Rosie, sitting, waiting for your mind like last week's groceries, I say, when I see you, Miss Rosie, in your old man's shoes with the big toes cut out, when I see you, who used to be called the prettiest gal in Georgia, used to be called Judge Rose. When I see you, Miss Rosie, because of your dedication, your devotion, your courage, and your love, I stand up. I stand straight up, and I know. When it looked like the sun, but not shine anymore. Miss Rosie, you became my rainbow in the cloud. And that wraps up this edition of Black Nouveau. Remember in the coming week, do something to expand your world. Good night.